You're sure you're not making this up? No, why should I? And who's this man you say is blackmailing her? Potter, Dan Potter. He used to be a servant. I see. Hey, I just can't believe it. Fancy doing him in, her own brother. How do you know it was her brother? Because of the brooch. It's the same one that's in her brother's picture. Are you scared, Davy? What of? Miss Pimosh? No. She's that fond of John Willie, Steve. Like you was her own. Even though her mum never used to bother about him the way she does. It makes us feel funny inside sometimes, seeing them together. Whatever she's done, she wouldn't harm our John Willie. If I thought she would, I'd have us out of there double quick. But what'll I do, Mr Talbot? She's not a wicked woman. You don't think that, do you? No, I don't. But supposing Snuffy lands in the kitchen with an arm boon? Is that likely? It's that sheep. It set him off. He's always digging for boons now. I see. The way I see it, you've got to get rid of the dog or the body. And I can't see you getting rid of the Snuffy. So it'll have to be the body, won't it? You mean I'll have to dig it up and cart it away somewhere? Oh, man, my stomach turned over just looking at it. Don't worry, lad. I'll come with you. Never seen a skeleton before. I suppose this might be big enough to hold what's left of them. Hmm? What do you do with them? Put them back in here. A long way back. <laughs> ah, you can lie there till kingdom come. Even if it is found eventually, nobody will know who it was. Just a miner, some long forgotten miner, that's all. Now, when's the best time when she's out of the road? Just before dinner time. About 11 o'clock, I suppose. She'll be in the kitchen, then. Tomorrow, then. 11 o'clock. Tomorrow? The sooner the better, eh? All right. Now, uh, off you go. And when you get back there, act natural and... Don't worry, lad. Well, there he is, Mr Talbot. We'll uh, scrape the soil off him first, then put the long bones in the sack. Leave the skull to last. David! David! Quiet. Here, hold that. Uh, Mr. Talbot. Hey, mm -hmm. right, find a glass, lad. Put some of that there. Miss Primarch. Miss mm -hmm. come on, lad. Sit up. There you are. Up you get. You'll be all right. Ah, oh, tap. John Willie. Ah, uh? dear John Willie. Hey, miss, have a supper, this, eh? We were doing our best, miss. The, the dog had unearthed it. Uh. I knew there was something on your mind. Both of you, but I couldn't believe. Just you soap up, eh? You'll be all right. I owe you an explanation. No, no, you don't have to, miss. I do. I do. You see, everyone believes that Richard, my brother, went abroad. But it isn't so. Where shall I begin? The beginning, miss? Richard was younger than I. Two years younger. And we were happy together as a family. But when our mother died, Richard never really got over it. He became unmanageable, and my father sent him away to school, but he kept on running away, so my father was forced to tutor him at home. As he grew older, Richard's wildness merely increased. He wouldn't settle to anything, and he began to drink, egged on by our friend, Mr. Coxon. 
Oh, yes. He knew of a place where he could get cheap, raw liquor. And he kept my brother well supplied. So that's why you hate him? Yes, David. Well, things went from bad to worse with my brother. Till one night something really terrible happened. A man came to see us. He was the father of a maid who used to work for us, but had left some time before. He came to tell us that she had died in childbirth and the baby with her. And in her last breath, she'd named the father of the child. Your brother? Yes. When my brother came home that night, he was drunk. There was a dreadful scene. My father said he must make reparation for the sin he had committed. But Richard laughed at him, his religion and his good works. And something snapped inside my father. There was an ornament, a bronze ornament, on the table beside him. He snatched it up, that kind, patient, gentle man, and struck his son with it. He fell to the ground and crashed his head against the hearth. It was that which killed my brother, not my father's blow. Well, my screams brought Potter to the scene. You remember, he was our servant then. My father collapsed. I was distressed and confused. But Potter took the situation in hand. My father had had a stroke. Any further trouble might kill him. So he suggested that we bury the body where you found it and put it about that my brother had gone abroad. Well, I was grateful. So grateful that I gave him more money. Oh, yes, it was a mistake. And one that I'm still paying for. Potter's been blackmailing me ever since the day my father died. But surely if you'd explained what really happened, people would have understood? No, Mr. Talbot. People would not have understood. My father was a parson. A parson preaches forgiveness and love and understanding. They'd have branded him a hypocrite. They would say he had killed and therefore was not worthy to be a man of God. Then when your father died, you could have told the truth then, got the justice under Potter. No. But then, Potter said, if I exposed him, he would say it was I who killed my brother. There were no witnesses. If he were to end in prison, then so would I. You can't go on like this, miss. It's got to come out into the open. But I cannot prove my innocence now any more than I could then. Uh? You understand, don't you, John Willie? He understands many things, this child. When's Mr Potter coming again, miss? Day after tomorrow. Why? I know what we should do. Tell the parson, and he can bring a justice, so they'll hide. And then they can come out into the hall and listen in like... Yes, David? Well, listen in like I did when Mr Potter came. When he asked you for an extra hundred pounds. What do you think of David's plan, Mr Talbot? Good idea, I'd say. We could sneak the justice and parson Murray in through the hole in the wall. Then no one would notice. Yes, then as soon as they're in their places, it'll be up to you to lead the conversation round to exactly what happened that night, so that Potter can convict himself. But it all sounds too simple. Well, sometimes the simplest things work best, miss. Yes. It'll be best if I talk to the parson and get him to speak to the justice. Because Potter mustn't get a hint of all this. Then I'll arrange for them both to be here early that morning. In the meantime, I'll deal with your brother. Until we can give him a decent Christian burial. Yes. David, you found my brother. You must have known what it meant. Yet you stayed on. There are things in life, Mr. Talbot, that renew one's faith in God. Hello, David. Morning, miss. 
Where's John Willie? He's still asleep in bed. You're up early. I couldn't sleep. This is an important day for me, David. Yes, miss. If I act my part well... You will, miss. I'll be free for the first time in years. And it's all thanks to you. Me? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Will you continue to work for me, David? Afterwards? Yes, miss. I owe you a lot, miss. I'll stay as long as you want me to. But we mustn't count our chickens, must we? Aye, uh, well... I'll just go and wait for Mr Talbot and the parson. Right. This here's the justice. Pleased to meet you. The Reverend Murray, you know, yeah? Hello, David. Hello, sir. Just show the way, lad. This way. I'll, uh, I'll go first, shall I? I'd be obliged, Mr. Talbot, if you'd stay close at hand in case he puts up a fight. I hope he does. I'd like to get my hands on him. Aye, well, leave enough of him for the law to deal with, won't you? David tells me you're thinking of taking up farming, Mr. Talbot. Aye, that's right. Down south, though. I'll miss this part of the world. Hmm? Hmm? David, take John Willie into the garden. Then go and open the gates. Right, miss. I shall receive the gentleman in here, I think, where the accident occurred. To facilitate discussion of the unfortunate happening, which I, for one, should be pleased. Yes, quite, quite. So if you gentlemen would hide in the study until a suitable moment, Mr. Talbot will be just outside the window. Are you still here? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. I don't know what you mean, Mr. Potter. You great gormless idiot. It's not healthy down here, I told you. Ah, there you are, miss. Come in, Potter. David, you wait in the kitchen. And how are you today, miss? As well as can be expected. conclusion did you reach? I've decided not to meet your demands, Potter. <laughs> In fact, I'm very sorry I ever took your advice. If I had sent for the justices in the first place, they would have dealt leniently with my father. If your father hadn't struck your brother, he'd never hit his head on the hearth. But my father never meant to kill when he struck him. It was the way which his head hit the hearth that caused him to die. All right. Maybe they wouldn't have hanged him. But he'd have gone down for manslaughter, though. And you were very keen to save him from that, weren't you? Very filial. But my father's dead, Potter. Been dead for years. Why shouldn't I tell the truth? Because I'd swear blind that it was you that struck the blow that sent your brother flying. And they'd believe me. <laughs> You've got no choice now but to pay up just whenever I want you to. I don't think so, Daniel Potter. I arrest you in the name of the law. <gasps> don't move. Any of you. But don't move. Stay there. The key. The key to the gate. Chuck it over now, lad. 
No! No! Don't tempt me, boy. I'm a good shot. One! Give him the key, David! Two! David, the key! Give it to him, lad. Stay where you are now. Now, warning you, don't try and follow me. Look out, Mr. Talbot! Mr. Talbot, is it bad? More burns than anything, just a flesh wound. After him, somebody! No! Careful now. John Willie! Oh, I mean it. Ah, let us go. Let us go. I tell him what he's got, John. I tell him. Hold still a minute. Davy, don't be daft, man. I'm going to take the shot. Cut across the fence. Follow you anywhere, and your brother. Oh. Well, let him. That way I'll be rid of the lot of you. Mr. Talbot, isn't it? Uh, oh, uh, uh. 
Oh, I don't know where he is. Maybe he's gone south. It's funny. I'd have thought he'd come to say goodbye. And she's funny now and all. Uh, and Miss Pimosh? Uh, she's got kind of sprightly like. I know she's got her money back and all, but it's as if she doesn't need us anymore. Not for company like. Hello, Davy. Hello, John Willie. Hello, Miss. Oh, I'm so glad to be home. I've driven all the way to Newcastle today. Why, oh, Miss, that's a fair jaunt. I'll put the kettle on. No, David, sit down. I want to talk to you. David, are you very fond of your name? Me name, Miss? Do you mean David? No, I mean Halliday. Well, it's the only one I've got. How would you like another name? Another surname? I don't quite follow you, Miss. What do you think I've been doing these past few days since all the fuss died down? Well, I can't really say. You're enjoying yourself, like the Justice told you. Yes, that's true. But there's been something much more important on my mind. You see, David, I've no family, no one belonging to me in the whole wide world. And I was a very lonely woman till you and John Willie came into my life. And I want you to stay in my life. How would you like to become my family, my real family, take my name and live in this house with me? You will be my sons. Oh, miss. Well, that's what I've been arranging all this time. But it's only if you are agreeable. Remember, David, you are not answerable for yourself alone, but for John Willie also. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll go. Uh, uh, uh. Crying like a girl. But it's like a fairy tale, man. Living here, us minor sons, living here like lords. But I think I'm dreaming. Couldn't be more pleased. David, Mr. Talbot has come to say goodbye to you. You're going then? I am ready for the road, lad. But straight away I'd like to say I'm delighted with the latest news. The missy has just been telling me. I'm sure Mr. Talbot would take some tea. Thank you, miss. Put the kettle on, David. Mr. Talbot? I have a proposal to make to you. Oh, I. A business proposal. Mm. You see, Davy will be very busy with his education from now on, and I shall be needing help with the estate. I should like to make it as it used to be. The wages will be small, but there are David's old rooms and plenty of food. Would you consider it? Would a drowning man refuse a rope, miss? I'm glad, no. Real glad. And now for that tea. And it must be a very special meal, for today happens to be my birthday. Oh, miss, why didn't you tell us? Happy birthday, miss. Oh, David. You give me the only thing of value you possess. But we've got everything, miss. You've given us everything, me and John Willie. Your home and your name. But you've done something more for me. I'll never have to go down that pit again. I'll be able to see daylight every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> 